From the vault. From the vault. All right, so first up, um, I'm going to show a video. Okay. So uh, the updated microbit came out. Well, we've been working on updated Clue. So this yeah. is an ESP 32S2 with a mini module. and that, We think this would make a great Clue. Yeah, board. so that's coming soon. Uh, and now I'm going to play two videos. The first one um, speaks for itself. The second one we'll pop back over and talk about the uh, stem frame. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I designed a new STEM IQT board over the weekend. I wrote a library for it. This is the MLX uh, 9395, and it's an ultra-high-range magnetometer. So um, right now it's kind of measuring the Earth's field, and you can see it's kind of juddering around like zero. It's not, it's, it's not a high precision. It's a high-range sensor. So what's nice about this is that I can't saturate it, even with this, like, rare Earth magnet. Um, and so this is used for like doing magnetic field sensing, not earth magnetic field, but like, you know, a magnet or a motor or something like that. And this is a new sensor from Alexis. So tri-axis micro power magnetometer. It's actually going to be this week's NPI, but don't tell anybody that. It's a secret. Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I just put together a prototype of this board that I'm calling Stemma Friend. I don't have a really cool name for it yet. But it's basically a SAMD21 board with a 240 by 240 display. And it's meant to help me with like I squared C development. So um, for this board, I'll just show the back, there's two Stemma QT connectors and there's a Grove compatible connector. And then this is that display, there's a mode button, SAMD21, USB-C, and then battery power if you want to battery power. It's meant to be really small. And right now what it's doing is you can see it's actually scanning through every address and displaying what I squared C addresses it sees. And this is really handy because when I'm bringing up a board, the first thing I check is, is it powered and does it show up on I squared C? So you'll see, uh, like here, I've got one device on the uh, STEM uh, port and then if I unplug this guy here, the, um, the I squared C address is unhighlight. So if I plug it in, you'll see it highlights, if I remove it, it gets, uh, turns back to gray. So a little uh, tool just to help me debug my STEMA QT boards. And that's a STEMA PAL. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's going on with this thing? Yeah, so this is a new board that, well, we were chatting about, like, we have so many STEMA boards, and we were, like, talking about, you and I were just chatting while we were walking about, like, what it takes to bring one up and all, like, the design decisions and, like, we thought, like, wouldn't it be cool to have a little, like, friend, like, something that is, is like, your little pal that goes with all the STEM boards that helps you test them and debug them and maybe can, like, you know, from our most popular sensors, maybe even tell you, like, the values of, of like, humidity or light or something. Um, so I'm, I've basically designed a, a very small board. Um, it has our 240 by 240, uh, uh, 1.3-inch color TFT. I really love this TFT. It's, like, so inexpensive and it's colorful and it's great resolution. And on the back, it's got a SAMD21, and it's you know the code's going to be definitely an Arduino because there's no way you could fit all the library code you need for every sensor on CircuitPython. I think it would be just too expensive and too large um, with a SAMD51 and too complicated. I want to keep it simple. Um, there's two I squared C ports. One is like a Grove compatible port. It's a um, JST PH2 pin at uh, two millimeter, and one is the JST SH like the standard STEM QT or Quick connector. Uh, so they're two separate devices, and then there's the SPI device for the display, and then there's also a UART device that's shared on these pins. So I'm going to also have it do a couple of UART things, like a UART display or debug. Uh, there's also a mode button, so maybe like all the different modes you can kind of cycle between them. Uh, and there's a reset button. Um, I'm going to get rid of this LED, it's too bright. And there's a little NeoPixel over here as well. And um, so the first demo I wrote was just like a basic I squared C scanner because I, I, I can actually use this like constantly. I'm always making breakouts and I'm like, does this even show up on I squared C? Does it power up? Does it like enumerate, right, in I squared C land? So this scanner, all it does is it goes through like every address starting from 8 to 77. That's the standard I squared C address space because it's 7-bit and there's some that are reserved. And then, um, you know, as you unplug um, and plug in, uh, devices they appear so like you see this one is uh, the blue letters and then the yellow characters are for um, the Grove connect so if I disconnect that the the yellow uh, 
highlight goes away. So this scanner can work on um, either port, so it could be handy if you have like, you know, one, you have like a growth sensor or something with a larger uh, connector, or if you just have like two devices that have the same I2C um, interface, you want to connect to both of them, so it can do that. So that's the beginning, and then I, I started an I2C sniffer, and I got the software working using, again, it's like all interrupt based, so it wouldn't work in CircuitPython anyways, because it's like very, very tight timing. Um, but I can sniff 100 kilohertz I squared C and output it to the UART. So I'm going to clean that up and then um, I'll add that. So I'll just keep adding modes. And then maybe I'll have a mode where for like our top 20 most popular devices, it'll say, hey, I detected that you plugged in like, yeah. you know, a PCT 2050-75. Here's the temperature. Now, the only thing is that, you know, it's not going to work all the time because you can't always detect exactly what device is um, there like for some devices i really like they have an id connect they have some they have some register you can read that could tell you like hey this is what it is but there's actually a lot of sensors that don't um you know there's a lot of sensors where the id is like the only thing that really differentiates it so we won't be able to do it for everything but i think we can like yeah maybe do it for some like well, definitely well, the bmp 280 series for example yeah, and this is kind of like that vision of the future that we were all told about. Like, you plug it in and it announces itself on the network and it says, here's what I am, here's what I can do. Yeah. And then you can start to, yeah. like, oh, cool, I have a humidity sensor and I have a GPS. Now I can... Yeah, I would yeah. have it just, like, be like, hey, I detected, like, an I2C GPS. Like it, it, for some items, it's, like, they're very unique and you definitely know, like, this is yeah. a GPS item. So I think, um, I think we'll try. I don't know how effective. I, you know, I'm not going to be able to make the universal everything everything, but I think... Yeah. You know, we can have a pack with our most popular sensors, like, you know, the SI7021 is a popular Scilabs sensor, and that, that would definitely be able to work. And I think the PCT2075, you know, would also probably work. All right. All right, so that's the... That's up to the grid. Get back in the wall. Okay.